<coughs> so, <coughs> you ready? <laughs> so this, this lecture is entitled The Science Behind Biologic Architecture. We originally assembled the curriculum for the Biologic Architecture Conference Series. Uh, we started in Mexico City. We had 300 international professionals there, thanks to Nina and Arturo. And here we want to go into a little bit more of the introduction, which is how do you make a building that causes an electric field that makes life happen? In other words, what is it to create a space which electrically causes a seed to germinate? So the point is that a building is a device that makes an electric field. And if that electric field is fractal, then everything grows better. Seeds germinate better, people get healthy, you have vitality, <coughs> and you lucid dream and you have bliss. And all that is based on a very simple science. And that science is that if the building itself looks like a rose, which is called fractal, then it creates perfect compression, which is what Michael was talking about when he talked about the sweet spot. So in a sense, the subtitle of this lecture is, what is the science of what makes a sweet spot? The sweet spot is the place where all waves converge, they implode, they compress, and they switch on what we call DNA radio. In science, that's called a phase conjugate dielectric field. Don't worry about those words, but that's actually what a fractal creates. It creates an electric field that creates perfect distribution. So, we start with some very soft, playful images as we introduce the more serious science. You wonder why, in the original crop circle, <coughs> The, the Stonehenge was located near a fractal. <clears throat> and we see that nature is using fractals all over the place, just like in Michael's slideshow, where the inside looks like the outside. That self-similarity produces what in science defines fractality, which is perfect compression. Infinite, non-destructive compression creates the possibility of perfect charge distribution. And that is the physics of what, behind, what is behind what creates life. Perfected charge distribution is life. It's what's behind the word scion, which means to branch, and the word divine. The concept of the sacred is based on fractality for that reason, because it is from that place at the center of the fractal that you get perfected charge distribution. And that electrical perfect distribution or sharing of waves is what creates growth. And here's the point. In the original Orgon work, they saw they had a 30% difference in seed germination in what we now know is the correct term for an Oregon electric field, which is a phase conjugate dielectric or fractal field. And that's the title of our new technology series, fractalfield.com, and with Roger's help, <coughs> uh, breakthrough-technologies.com. So here we have the original magnetic map of the city of Prague, <laughs> which we'll be introducing Olda here very shortly. And when uh, Valerie and I were visiting Olda and doing this work in Prague, we noticed that living in the center of this map, which turns out to be a rose, that we were able to lucid dream better, just like when Valerie and I noticed we slept in that wooden egg that Michael designed, that we lucid dreamed better. Actually, I was able to... My, my clear audience is weak, but in Prague I was able to hear the voices of her ancestors. It's really true. We now know why. The physics of this kind of electric field creates perfect compression and perfect distribution of that electric field. We know how to measure it. We know what sacred space is. This is our group in Australia assembling another fractal field, kind of a Stonehenge. The key elements that make that kind of field is the nature of the materials chosen. In this case, we have a basalt, and if we look at the cross-sectional view, it's a paramagnetic piezoelectric material, and the natural electrical molecular geometry is pent. It's a volcanic, but it's basalt, and its very nature is introducing the concept of the conjugation of phases, which is allowed by a pent, a non-rectilinear structure. A structure based on golden ratio creates pent, and that creates implosive compression, the opposite of what you get with a 4, 6, and an 8. The 5, 10 symmetries create golden ratio, and that's what creates perfect compression, and that's what creates charge distribution. And this is a map overlooking, this is actually the zoom from Google Earth of this structure we're building 
the new Stonehenge of Australia at Tiagra Airport outside of Byron Bay. So, in Feng Shui, they knew that a sharp corner was evil. But now, as a physicist, I can explain to you why. Because the, r the right angle of that material creates a place where waves interfere destructively. And that's why, in Feng Shui, it's evil to sit next to a right sharp corner. It's because at that place, the electric fields create destructive wave interference. Now, if that corner were, in fact, based on 5, 6, or 8-sided symmetry and golden ratio, then it would not be evil because there would be constructive electric distribution at that point. And that is what creates life. Yeah? So the very nature of constructive versus destructive interference is what's actually defining the sacred and the ability to make life happen. In technical terms, the right angle here, 4, 6, and 8-sided symmetry, creates powers of 2 in the harmonic ratio, and that creates maximum destructive interference, and that biology doesn't like, which is to say opposite to phase conjugating. Whereas if that corner were based on golden ratio, as here, then that will create a positive effect on seed germination. So here, we put these seeds in a metal container and found that they didn't germinate. This is early experiments we did in Turin. Later we have larger scale experiments where we see up to 300 percent growth effect. This is paramagnetic material. It's a, para, uh, it's a, a calcite uh, granite based uh, stone that's in a trench in a Sri Yantra up to a half a mile across or a quarter mile. It's very large like a football field and there's an effect on growth in the center and actually the effect affects the climate and precipitation, etc. So we're beginning to see that the Earth grid and the dodeca shape of the galaxy and the zodiac, these shapes nature used for a reason because the extension of the dodecahedron creates golden ratio and that creates phase conjugation. This is just a picture of the first international conference on biologic architecture in Mexico City with Arturo Aninen, who will be presenting later, secretgeometria.com. But notice the incredible interest in the student body and the professional architects and even the government. We had people from like 10 or 15 countries, all professionals, three-day intensive conference on biologic architecture. And we stand in the shadow of that event in the sense that this was the sequel, yes? So this is from Michael Rice. And we don't need to continue here because he presented that beautiful. But you just see that the relationship between the geometry and the electric field created is fractal. This I would like to talk about. This is Ron Eglash, who is a famous professor who teaches about fractality in African architecture. Now what he noticed is the shape of the, the, shape of the village is the same as the shape of one house in the village. And the shape of the altar in the house of the shaman chief of the village. Here's the house of the shaman chief of the village in the fractal of the village. And the altar in the center of the shaman chief's house where you go to talk to your ancestors is the same shape. So the altar is the same shape as the house, is the same shape as the village. Do you see the concept of self-similarity? The inside that looks like the outside. That is fractality. That is perfect compression. The point is that as we'll later see, this is the place where you go to talk to your ancestors. Now, the reason you're able to talk to your ancestors here at the place called altar, if you know the origin of the word altar in church, it's the Sumerian word shem, which means shem on or shaman. It actually means high word firestone or fractal capacitor. So the definition of altar is actually a fractal capacitor. Even Zechariah Sitchin figured that out. So the point is that if you go to the place where we know it is more likely to be able to speak with your ancestors, you can measure the air there and prove why that space is sacred and why that place is the place where you can speak with your ancestors. The air there will be more fractal. Here is one of the technologies we use to measure sacred space. This is an extension of the GDV technology, gas discharge visualization, which is an extrapolation upon the... the uh, Curly and photography principle. And here we've measured the air. We're actually only measuring the ability of a spark to propagate. That's it. 
if there's a place for charge to go, and here we put the probe under a sacred tree, and we measured the ability of charge to be distributed. So under the sacred tree, we get this picture of the Curlian photograph of the charge in the sacred space, yeah? And then we measure the area and fractality of that distribution of charge. And then we go into the opposite to sacred space, a metal building all full of squares. And what did we get? This. This is why it feels like shit, <laughs> Mary, when you go into a metal building. Because the capacitance has no place to go. Charge distribution defines the sacred because that is how biological radio works. We call it DNA radio. So very simply put, the ability for charge to be distributed defines sacred space and defines the ability to make a building that can cause a seed to germinate. It's simple. Electric fields, when they're able to distribute perfectly, just like sound distributes perfectly in the center of a fractal, cause growth. This is one example. Now, there are other ways to measure that sacred space. We'll show you a bit later where we measure <coughs> the capacitance directly by power spectrum. This is uh, other pictures. Notice that these giant paramagnetic structures affect the rainfall. They eliminate geopathic zones. So we collimate long wave magnetic lines with respect to so short wave, <coughs> and that creates fractality, compression, and coherence. Fractality is the perfection of coherence. This is some of the work we, we recommend that all architects learn to do basic dowsing because the perception of the weak magnetic lines of the Earth is your natural cross point where you start the labyrinth and your building. The place where waves agree, where compression is possible, is the place where biologic memories can be sorted. I don't know if I got the pronunciation right. <laughs> This is, this is the uh, original uh, uh, Sri Yantra in the Desert project uh, affecting measurably microclimate from uh, Bill Witherspoon, who's a friend, and we replicated that work in Turin. This is another example of a phase conjugate dielectric or fractal capacitor. It's called the Ark of the Covenant. This is a capacitor which is able to store radioactivity non-destructively. Okay. <clears throat> We know that focused human attention will reduce radioactivity measurably. This device will do the same thing. Both are fractal capacitors. <clears throat> the other thing this device does is this makes a fractal or phase conjugate di dielectric spark, which enables the manufacture of white gold powder, or maize mana, the spice, which became Holy Communion. This was the, the cash cow of the Essenes when Akhenaten changed his name to Moses, and they sold the white gold powder around the world. The point is that the ability to make a capacitor to cause life is, is, is the center of most religious traditions. And when we drop the miracle worship and the personality worship, we have physics. And we have beautiful spiritual physics. This is some magnetic maps <coughs> of uh, Chart uh, on the top right and uh, m magnetic maps of houses. This is the DC magnetometer we originally used for measuring these weak magnetic lines. I want to make a point here. This is the point. <clears throat> As a biologic architect, you're doing a location of a site where you want to place a building. The black lines here around uh, Braidwood, uh, outside of Canberra in Australia, are roads. And this was in an early Aboriginal village. <clears throat> the point is the color map here, all the color and the white. Th this, is, this is a map of the magnetic conductivity measured from the airplanes. So we're making a map of where on the land there's a river of magnetic conductivity, DC magnetic flux conductivity, of the sort that you'd measure with that kind of device. Now, it turned out that after they made this technical magnetic map of where magnetic rivers flow on the land, they realized that these are precisely the lines the aboriginals called the dreaming line and the song the song line and the dreaming track. And I think as a scientist, we need to understand why a song line and a dreaming track is in fact a measurable river of magnetism and where the measurable river of magnetism converges and crosses in a fractal here is where you place your house, your village, your altar, your sacred space. 
We don't have time for it in this lecture. We'll show a little pictures later. But the fact is that measurably, the, the electric cloud of plasma that leaves your body at the moment of death, do you know where it goes measurably, where, how Karatkov measured it? It goes down these lines, the dreaming track, the song line. Biologic plasma, what you call your ghost, your spirit, your immortal body, called the Ka or the Ba from the Ka in Egypt, travels along these lines for a reason that's teachable in physics and measurable. I'm just dropping a few clues here to introduce you to these basic ideas. So these were just, I'm just going to run through now some of the early animations from science. That was just the, the poetic intro. This is the actual science. This is the geometry of the electric field that permits that charge distribution. This is actually a map of the path into DNA for for capacitive charge. So if we if we take a top-down view here, there's there's a top-down view of DNA. And if I look at the side view, you see what that looks like. That's a three-dimensional fractal. Merkaba, Ezekiel's wheel, city of revelation. And if I rotate that golden spiral that connects them down that cone called the caduceus, meaning phase conjugation, I get the fractal field of DNA called the Holy Grail. <clears throat> that Holy Grail is the only possible three-dimensional fractal, and it's the nature of how the electricity of DNA radio works. And that's the point. That actually the ability to fabricate these structures is what allows us to make sacred space and what makes biology work, the motor of DNA radio. The side view versus the top view of that same spiral, do you see golden spiral, is called the caduceus Hermes, or Kadistu, the actual life designers of the Anunnaki. And that became our word caduceus, which is phase conjugation. Phase conjugation simply means that the phases of the waves conjugate in the sense of conjugal relations, you know? <laughs> and that creates scale invariance, non-destructive compression, which is what you need to do with your electric field if you would like to die successfully. And your DNA is preparing you for that if you help by having some bliss experiences. <laughs> so that's an, that's an introduction <clears throat> to what we call fractality, the new science of life. Gravity, color, all the universal centripetal and negatropic forces are caused electrically by fractality. This is the physics that Einstein missed. He knew it was about non-destructive compression, but because he did not know what a fractal was, and unfortunately, most of physics does not know what a fractal field is, but we now know, we can now explain basically the mysteries of life, and better, we can, we can solve practical social problems by using these principles, including in architecture. So what we're saying specifically is that the perfected fractal phase conjugation, means waves that can add and multiply using golden ratio, is the electric origin, cause, and mechanism of all centripetal and self-organizing forces, including and especially, this is the electric cause and mechanism of gravity, life force, perception. The electric cause and mechanism, the reason there is perception is because your brain waves phase conjugate. That's why if you sit under a sacred tree, the fractal electric field causes your vision to get sharper, and you can maybe have your new clairvoyance. This is the electric cause and origin of enlightenment and bliss. This is the cause and origin of alphabets. And we're going to see it's the cause of color. Color exists because photons phase conjugate. That is the reason there is rainbows. And if you know it, then you can use color to heal. So this concept of perfect compression into the black hole was called the Chem in Egypt, the original name for Egypt, meaning the place of the blackness, because Enki's blood was blue-black. And later that word Chem became our word chemistry and alchemy, meaning the ability to access a black hole. And that's the physics that we then called implosion, fusion, zero point, omega point, still point, etc. So we have too many names, for w or bindu point, we have too many names for the principle of what Mike beautifully poetically described as the sweet spot. <laughs> the sweet spot is a place where waves do that. So this is the cause of DNA and proprioception, and we go into this in great detail in our course. Very practically speaking, for example, if you were to walk the pattern on the floor of a figure eight, like the double dorgy, the brain gym of the cross crawl called infinity walk, and observe within weeks a child eliminates dyslexia, because they are phase conjugating their brain wave, pressurizing the cross-hemispheric blood flow. 
you can see this creates proprioception, phase conjugate brain waves, ability to juggle, heals dyslexia, ability to dis disappear, the physics of the green lion, red lion, <laughs> secrets of successful death in Tibet, they're all based on this principle. <clears throat> so, when Mother Nature designed water, she used that architecture. This is water molecules, it's called a clathrate cage, it's what's behind monoatomic hydrogen, microhydrogen. This is the three-dimensional view, another three-dimensional view. This is the spin path to that center. This is called phase conjugation. When water molecules do this, they create charge distribution and that causes life. We can do this with buildings if we understand the principle. You can actually, here we're falling from an airplane and you're you're realizing you're being attracted by gravity, but you're realizing you're falling into a fractal because this, this canyon structure is very fractal. And you realize that fractality is what's sucking you to Earth. <laughs> gravity is created by. <laughs> All right. But if you look at, at the Mandelbrot fractal, you see it's based upon golden ratio and the top-down view of DNA. You see that? This is the top-down view of DNA. This is the Mandelbrot fractal. And these are powers of the golden ratio. Golden ratio perfects fractality, and that's the mechanism of DNA, and that's what we need to understand. Ain't it funky? Get down, get down. <laughs> All right. So Mother Nature is using golden ratio for almost all biologic structures for a very particular reason. Mother Nature used golden proportion because that is how the electric field of DNA creates perfect radio. The primary definition of fractality is infinite non-destructive compression, which means the ability to zoom in forever. Yes, it's entrancing. In fact, it's the definition of trance. It's the definition of focus. It's the definition of embedding. It's the definition of perfect compression. From that point, all waves can agree. And from that point, perfect distribution is achieved. And that's the point. Otherwise, it would be pointless. We don't have an appointment otherwise. So, so Mother Nature is using the concept of fractality. Obviously, this is delicious, but it's delicious because it's a device which stores charge. So now we know how to build a city that actually can attract the charge called life. So here we, we joke about the fact that mass is a standing wave. But what allows that wave to stand is the fact that the waves are compressing to center in a fractal. And so the conserved inertia there of the charge is called mass. So mass is actually caused by fractality, because that's what allows compression to happen. In physics, you define mass by the storage of inertia, but you see that inertia doesn't get the centripetal force to be stored unless fractality is allowing the charge to compress. The other basic principle, and again, we're just touching on the high spots here, but the other basic principle is that all concept of centripetal centrifugal is what became a concept of negative versus positive charge, plus, minus, yin, yang. All of these concepts are based on the idea of centripetal versus centrifugal charge. For example, <clears throat> the north pole of the magnet will reduce your toothache, but, in, but decrease the healing rate. The south pole of the magnet will increase the pain, but increase the healing rate. And that's because one is centripetal and one is centrifugal. So we don't have time now, but we use this principle now. I, I didn't bring the device with me, but we can make the two like poles, the north-north pole of the magnet, attract. Because we now know that all magnetic fields are octahedral. And if you line up the vortex correctly, the like poles will suck in and attract each other of a magnet. I invented phase conjugate magnetics. And in the center of that magnetic field of phase conjugating magnets, we produce water that affects growth by 300%. So this is, was originally called quantum mechanics, which is just the fact that the wavelength divides evenly in the circumference, I'm pointing out only that the only reason you should study geometry is to learn what waves do. So do not get caught in numerology and pattern recognition unless you understand the reason for doing it, which is to predict what waves of charge are going to do. So if you don't know what an electric field is, you can't know what sacred geometry is for. right? And so this is leading us to this idea in optics, if you bring 
lasers together in four direction called four wave mixing. It's called phase conjugate optics. It's well known and in that system you create self-organization, systems emerge from chaos and you have time reversal closest that physics gets from to magic. Yeah. Now we've invented phase conjugate dielectrics and phase conjugate magnetics from that principle. And it's all based on this geometry. The waves approach each other 0 0.618, 1, 1 1.618, 2.618 in golden mean ratio and that's what creates the ability for the waves to agree. It creates the possibility of the adding and multiplying of the wave fronts to be constructive. Remember, Einstein died with his problem. He knew that infinite non-destructive compression was absolutely the solution to the unified field, but he did not know what a fractal was and he did not understand that the golden mean ratio solves constructive electrical interference. So what we say is modern physics is incredibly stupid because not knowing that golden ratio solves electrical interference is the reason physics doesn't know the cause of gravity or life. Yet the intelligence it takes to know that golden ratio solves constructive interference is right up there with the intelligence it takes to know that if you want to make a wheel you need a circle. You get it. It's that simple. If you want to make life you're going to need golden ratio and there's an electric reason. And if you understand the electric reason you can build the wheel. So that's why physics doesn't know what the cause of gravity is is because they don't know that golden ratio dissolves constructive interference. And yet DNA is based on that. So this is called phase conjugation. Perfect adding and multiplying. Many pictures. This is the three dimensional stellation. See the dodeca ecosa, dodeca ecosa, the only possible three dimensional fractal called the star mother kit. <clears throat> and that really is the mother of stars because stars are born because DNA makes an electric field that serves centripetal force. <clears throat> Here we're measuring that in brain waves. We'll see a little bit more, but golden mean ratio in brain waves <laughs> creating bliss based on peak perception. So you actually measure the ability to have peak experience when you discover this golden ratio. The other little fun story, <laughs> you know, New Scientist magazine announces the universe is fractal. <laughs> Nature magazine announces the universe is a dodecahedron. Neither magazine knows that the dodecahedron is the perfect fractal and neither magazine knows that that is the cause of gravity. Oops, little problem here, right? So once we understand that fractality is the electric cause of gravity and centripetal forces, we begin to, begin to make life, yeah? Because life is based on the fact that we create centripetal force in our plasma. The plasma field is what you call spirit or ka, and it becomes centripetal when you get fractal, and that's what allows you to steer. You know, a jellyfish medusa can't steer unless it sucks. <laughs> really sucks, doesn't it? And yet, if you don't create suction, a centripetal force in your plasma, you'll never steer a tornado. And if you can't steer a tornado, you will not steer very well when you die. You know, sometimes you get a car and the steering wheel was optional. <laughs> sort of like dying. <laughs> when you die, if you want a steering wheel, you're going to need to be able to navigate your plasma. Check to see if you can lose a dream. You'll know if you're steering well. So the, the way that the universe was identified to be dodeca ecosa was because of the geometry of plasma. And plasma actually makes up 99.99% of the universe. And that's exactly what your ghost at the moment of death is made of. Hello. <laughs> so, so here is, uh, is Garrett Lisi, who really cre created the E8 unified field theory, in which he accounted for all of the fundamental particles in one geometry. And what he doesn't explain very well is that E8, the uni new unified field theory, is based almost entirely, this is a three-dimensional animation of that symmetry, and this is all of the subatomic particles that exist in that one geometric nest. But what he doesn't emphasize quite enough is the fact that that E8 is based entirely on the work of, well, on golden mean ratio as Mohammed El Nashi, a famous mathematician who was supposed to be with us in Budapest, 106 papers on golden mean ratio and fundamental physics. Now this conference isn't about fundamental physics, obviously, but it is about understanding the principle. And the principle is that this golden ratio physics is creating the centripetal force to hold life together. So here, in, when waves lock together in this geometry, each of these nodes is at a still point. 
And the nature of that still point is because the distance between them is fixed. If you touch one ball at one end, a billion balls down the row, one ball drops off. Whereas if you drop three, three will drop off at the other end. And that creates, if the balls are perfectly touching, every ball along the way has completely received the information, but zero energy was taken to distribute that charge. So when these balls lock together with golden ratio in this nest of stillness, think of it as the rapture, <laughs> the electric field you feel at the moment of bliss. In the center of the fractal, charge distribution is perfected because charge storage is eliminated. It's very simple. Each of these balls did not move when you touch one here and a billion balls away, one dropped off. None of the balls moved. So this was called perfect distribution because of zero storage. None of the balls stored any of this energy. In economics, fractal economics is the only way to have abundance for the same reason. Because perfect distribution eliminates storage. That's how God's mind works. It's called the divine. You see? So you can have fractal money in addition to fractal electronics. Fractal electronics is called life, the divine. You see? So this is the beginning of inventing systems that actually create biologic architecture in economics. So we take that, we see, we're not going to go into all of that today, but we see the origin of symbol. Here's the A, B, C. That this golden ratio that self-organizes on that golden donut, if you animate its perspective points of view, that symbol alphabet actually occurred for the same reason, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I haven't changed the shape of this spiral, only your point of view. <clears throat> and again, we're not going to go into all those slides. But uh, phase conjugation is, creates the nonlinear mirror, the physics of color. This is a little bit of poetry to help you get the sense of this. In physics, the electric field that you call God, <laughs> we call a phase conjugate dielectric. And Tom Bearden has written extensively about phase conjugate dielectrics, in a sense, in addition to myself. Also, the neuroscientist Steve Lehar has also written that phase conjugation is the cause of perception. So I'm not the only one explaining this physics. But what they observed was that a phase, if there's a phase conjugate field, fractal field, a little bit of God over here, and there's another one over here. They tend to locate each other at a distance. They self-organize. They know where each other is. It's like there's a little bit of invisible suction. <laughs> Just like, you know, if two really magical people are in a room full of a hundred not-so-magical people, <laughs> they suddenly, <laughs> you know how that works? Well, we can actually observe that in a phase conjugate field effect. It's self-organizing and self-attractive. Uh, in fact, it's a fractal attractor. So in phase conjugate optics, you have time reversal, self-correction, physics of self-organization. In phase conjugate magnetics, we can turn sewage water to drinking water in one pass. In phase conjugate dielectrics, which I haven't explained here yet, maybe we'll have time later, but it's basically, we take a, this is an example of a phase conjugate dielectric. You take a phase conjugating material like the gold in the gold dome of the Dome of the Rock or the White House or where Tia meditators meditate in order to float. That gold is called a phase conjugate dielectric. And if you feel that, particularly there, if you just pass it around, maybe if you feel it here, what, what you're feeling is the compression of charge. Now if I take that principle and make a resin that's phase conjugating, I can cause, I, I, I've measured a 50% effect on f fermentation rate. So I made an electric field that causes biology to go, ooh, ooh, we can go faster. <laughs> okay, so the electric field that allows biology to proceed efficiently is called fractal. And that's in science called conjugating the phases. To conjugate is adding and multiplying, just like when you get married, your DNA with your lover, you have conjugal relations, you know. You're testing to see which parts of you are shareable. And that's genetic as well as uh, psychological, you know. Okay, so I wanted to give you another example of the science. Here we're going to explain the reason there is color. This is helpful to architects. Supposing you want to design the colors on the faces of the room in such a way that they produce fusion, healing, black holes, implosion. Yeah? Well, 
The physics of the reason there is color is called phase conjugation. That if you take the visible spectrum, <coughs> which is precisely an octave in nanometers, and the precise wavelengths of the exact primary colors, and convert that to angular measure. <coughs> The reason that this is angular measure is because the photon, like everything in physics, travels as a donut. <coughs> and so, and the cone of your eye, in physics we know the only place you perceive color is in the cone of your eye, and yet in physics we know that cones can only be used for one function as an antenna, and that is to measure phase angle or tilt. So from that, in physics, we know that color is a name for the phase angle or tilt of the photon as a donut because cones in physics serve as an antenna to measure only one thing, angle or tilt of incoming donut toroid electric field domain. <laughs> Dominus vobiscum, domain, get it? Okay, so may the Lord be with you. Domi to dominate? No, the, the, a domain is a donut. <laughs> okay, so the photons that we call red are the ones that are approaching with the centripetal side facing you. And at exactly 90 degrees of that tilt, the photon you call green is now approaching you at this angle. And at 180 degrees, it becomes full and then ultra, uh, ultraviolet. Yeah. And so that distance of 180 degrees, the perfect octave called visible spectra, shows in perfect linear relationship the angles of tilt, which are color. So green is a precise 90 degree angle of the photon as a donut approaching the cone of your eye right on 90 degrees. Now, the new information here is why all plants are green. Anybody know? <laughs> Simple reason. Because green is the only color biology can't eat. So every plant spits it out. <laughs> That's why you see green, right? When you look at a plant, you see green because it's the only color plants can't eat. But you need to know the reason. The reason is because when the photon approaches biology in the color you call green, it's at perfect 90 degrees, which is opposite to phase conjugating. And therefore, biology cannot absorb that spin. A 90 degree angle. Dude, that's really important to explain uh, I, Well, I just explained it. The 90 degree angle in astrology and in feng shui and in the physics of optics called green is the angle that produces most destructive interference and therefore biology can't swallow that and so biology spits out all the photons you call green and that's called negative green energy. It's actually well known in psychotronics that if you look at this, the psychology of what's, how, what negative green energy is, negative green is a poisonous actual <laughs> electric field because that electric field is at 90 degrees. So as opposed to that, You see that orange and uh, violet are at 45 and 135 degrees. But notice the only two colors, the only two colors which are at an angle of the donut, which are not simply 45, you know, right angle, uh, cubic angles, are these two angles, yellow and blue, which are 63 and 117 degrees. Now, what you need to know <laughs> uh, uh, is that. Uh, this is, I was the first to recognize those angles in this table as being. Those angles are simply the interface angles of a dodecahedron. So if I took a dodecahedron and looked at the face angles, you know what the inside and the outside angle are of the face? <laughs> exactly. So, so it, you need to ask yourself, this is, this is maybe the most important, profound questions you ever ask yourself in your life. Why does the angle 63 and 117 degree, which produce yellow and blue, why is that the internal external face angle of a dodecahedron? Do you know why? Well, but more precisely, the, because, because color only happens when the donuts get themselves into the face angles of a dodecahedron to converge and get sorted. Did I pronounce that right, Michael? <laughs> sorted, 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 I say, after the Irish pub brawl, right? No. So, so the photons converge in the angle called phase conjugation, and that's the reason there is color, right? And Goethe did not understand that. He tried, but he didn't get it. 
The physics is more beautiful even than the physics is the best poetry, truly. So the reason there is color is because of phase conjugation. It's very simple. So now this gives you a whole new perspective where you can design architecture using healing colors. We know precisely where the angle of the ceiling should be right here and what the actual wavelength of the color should be to produce fusion and healing in color in a room. And it's based on pure physics of phase conjugation. It's another example of <clears throat> actually learning about fusion and life. So <clears throat> the concept behind this is summarized here. <clears throat> and this is, this is the most important geometry lesson any architect could ever learn. And it's very simple. <clears throat> when waves approach each other by golden mean ratio, <clears throat> they create maximum constructive interference. This is actually, you interfere all possible wavelength ratios, and this is powers of golden mean leading to 0.618, 1.618 golden mean ratio. If you measure the total power output, the total constructive interference, golden mean ratio is the best way for waves to constructively interfere. Opposite to that is if you take all possible wavelength ratios and interfere and measure what's left, if you measure octaves, powers of two, you get maximum destructive interference. And the square root of two, also destructive interference. Now inside a cube, a tetra octa cube, you have only powers of two in relationship. So an octave, tetra octa cube, seven axial spin symmetry geometries, you have maximum destructive wave interference. That's not evil. It's simply a geometry where waves cannot add and multiply constructively. So nature uses that phenomenon called tetra hex octa cube. It's called incubation. When a beehive wants to store the honey, they put it in a hex because it prevents charge from being distributed. So this is a charge isolator. Very good for storage, very bad for distribution. The opposite of that is the 510 golden ratio symmetries here, which produce maximum constructive interference. That is the difference between a hex and a pent, between a cube and a golden ratio. That is the difference. That's the reason the difference is important is because one's creating constructive interference, <clears throat> the five spin symmetry set, and the other's creating destructive interference, the seven spin axial symmetries of tetra cube octa. And so the, the, the seven spins is a isolator, and the five spins is a projector. And that difference is basically what's behind psychology, for example, when the heart, when heart rates move between head-centered and heart-centered emotion, you're moving between hex and golden ratio heterodyning or wave interference and that's what the difference actually between being stuck in your head <laughs> and being empathic because one's a shareable wave and one's a not quite so shareable wave. Now we'll see that later in architecture if we look at DNA that in the DNA the, each rung, la ladder of the rung of the ladder, rung of the ladder of DNA has a hex pent next to each other. The hex is the isolator, the pent is the storage. So in architecture it means one simple thing. It means <laughs> I had a friend, uh, Gus Chikachi, he, he built his house in Vermont. Actually, we should credit Gus, he's the one who introduced me to Bucky Fuller. But uh, he built his house in Vermont based on the, sh the shape of one rung in the ladder of DNA. Now if you look at DNA uh, carefully, you see an introduction to biologic architecture. Here is chemistry teaching us what architecture needs to do. I just want to show you just that one image from DNA. It's so cute. Remember, I'm walking up to Gus's house in Vermont, and I, I notice that the shape of the house is one rung in the ladder of DNA. And I'm saying, well, gee, uh, you know, why, why did you do that? And I've got to get the right image of DNA. Just bear with me one moment here. Ah, here it is. So this was the shape of Gus Chikachi's house right there. That's his house. Now, this is, this is educational because this is one rung in the ladder of DNA, as you can see here. At the center bond, you have hydrogen, which is golden ratio, implosion, fractal. I'm the one who proved that hydrogen's radii are golden ratio to Planck. 
<laughs> so that's where you get a soul, right there in the center of the rung of the bottom of the DNA. The tornado through there is fractal, and that's DNA radio working. It's called ensoulment, and braiding does it. It's all kinds of fun. So here is Gus Chikachi's house. Now, as an architect, you need to know what to do inside this house. This is the part of the house that's five-sided and golden ratio. And this is a golden ratio rectangle. And this is the part of the house that's six-sided. This, again, this is one rung in the ladder of DNA. In this part of the house, this is the part of the house where you want to have privacy and secrets and isolation and storage and recharging. Yeah? And this is the part of the house where you want to have distribution and no secrets and parties and uh, broadcasting and marketing <laughs> and sharing. You see? So this is a charge isolator and this is a charge distributor. It is not appropriate to see one as good and one as evil. And Gehan is going to tell you later about some experiments she's been doing, and we're having all kinds of fun discussing this from Cairo. Thank you, Gehan. I know, I know. Well, we're going to have fun with this. It's OK. But it's actually true that the, if you measure the capacitance in that room of the hex, you're going to find harmonic exclusiveness instead of harmonic inclusiveness. And that's the other thing I wanted to show you. The second way we have of measuring life force in that space. Here's, here's the space. Here's the nature of the fractal space. Here's what Steiner called projective geometry and etheric formative force. We now know that what's called etheric is, in fact, the frequency velocities of capacitance. Yeah, It's the mechanism of the ka. So the ether is, in fact, a weak capacitive field. It's not separate from physics. It's, in fact, coupled. But the secret is right here, that if you touch the opposite ends of a living egg, imagine this egg is Michael Rice's architecture now, OK? Remember, Michael just showed you all his, most of his architecture is based on an egg. He loves the egg. It's good. It's good. It's all fine. This is where the babies are born, in an egg, right? So if you touch the opposite ends of that egg, you measure a voltage. That voltage will be between about 4 and 12 millivolts. And if your biology teacher doesn't know where that voltage comes from, you need to fire them. They don't deserve their job, OK? <laughs> really. That voltage that you get in a fresh egg is called life. And where that voltage comes from is fractality. There's a pressure difference. And that pressure difference, in, uh, as an electrical engineer, I can tell you, the difference in pressure from here to here of charge is called voltage. <laughs> And, and the ability for the pine cone of the egg to make that voltage is called life. And this is the origin of architecture, uh, the ability to detect an arch. This is an arch. <laughs> Somebody teched it, right? <laughs> OK. So the ability to design that, look, here's how it works. You know, a pine cone over a year, this is the original uh, uh, fields of form, vortex of life, uh, Lawrence Edwards uh, work in anthroposophy. This pine cone, each of these seeds, is a capacitor. It opens and closes a little bit over the year, changing the amount of voltage that's coming out of here from gravity. The voltage is coming from gravity because it's fractal. So if you didn't know that fractality causes gravity, you're not, not going to know that fractality causes life. <laughs> Pretty simple. So the pine cone modulates the amount of voltage it gets from gravity by opening and closing slightly. And you'll see the graphs of that in the famous books, Field of Form, Vortex of Life. So if I measure the amount of that voltage over time, I measure whether this building, I mean egg, I mean building, I mean architecture, I mean egg, I measure whether it's a life creator or a life destroyer. So architects should be paid after they design their building if it makes the voltage that causes life. You see? This is nature's architecture. So here's the, I was just going to show you the other way we measure it. I don't know who has that gold egg here, but. If, you, if we take the two halves of that gold egg, here and here, <clears throat> and I put the living egg in the center, and I measure the output voltage like it was a brain wave, and spectrum analyze, I can tell a fresh egg from a stale egg. I can measure life. And this harmonic inclusiveness is the second way we can measure the fractality of sacred space. I can do this with your new house. Michael's new house, I'm going to go up there, and I'm going to put my capacitor right here. I'm going to take this capacitor, and I'm going to set it in Michael's new house. <clears throat> and I'm going to measure 
whether or not the electric field is harmonically inclusive or exclusive. And then we'll decide if the architect gets a paycheck. I actually think that that architect, Michael, deserves a paycheck because I believe he made a fractal capacitor. But if I were to take this device and put it in a metal building in a city, you know what I'd get? I would get harmonic exclusiveness instead of harmonic inclusiveness. Harmonic inclusiveness is how doctors know that your heart is creating an immune system. It's called a fractal heart is a healthy heart. So a heart that is, is harmonically inclusive has a cascade, is one whose HRV, heart rate variability, creates an immune system. Whereas if you measure someone's heart rate and you find harmonic exclusiveness, one harmonic, you say, oops, sorry, you're about to die. Statistics, <laughs> it's over. Oh well, you didn't get fractal, so you got dead. That's your bumper sticker. Get fractal or get dead. You get it? It's very simple. It's not complicated. And in harmonic analysis, music, that is defined as harmonic inclusiveness. And so later, you see, we won't have time here, but in biofeedback, we teach fractality in heart based on that principle. So here's some of the technologies for measurement. Here's how you can measure the Schumann resonance cascade as the weak harmonics of life force in eggs and trees. Here's a live egg. Here's a plum. Here's four different kinds of water. Grander water. Many of you are familiar with grander water. We can measure the grander water's capacitance and replicably show we can measure the life force in water the same way you measure the life force in architecture by spectrum analyzing its weak capacitive field. I show you something very simple. This is the harmonic analysis of the electric field of an essential oil based on roses and cloves called Oriacento. Neenan is uh, really appreciating the power of this. <laughs> and, uh, and what we found was this is the capacitive field of a very healing essential oil. And do you know what the electric field is? A caduceus. Do you know what a caduceus is? Harmonic inclusiveness. So literally, the spectrum analysis of life on frequency versus amplitude, the spectrum analysis of life is a caduceus. Isn't that cute? <laughs> do you see the point? That's what harmonic inclusiveness or fractality is. And so life force is the ability to, to get fractal. So, <clears throat> where are we going with this? It's, uh, it's 10 after 12. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this now. I just want to summarize in one minute the concept. The core concept here is that as bio-eco kinds of people, you all already knew that the house that feels good is one that's made of biologic materials. The new information now is that we can go to a university and a biophysics uh, department of a college and we can teach them the physics of why it is that architecture based on fractal materials creates life and architecture based on opposite fractal materials create death. We know that if you plant seeds in a steel or aluminum cup, they will die. But now we know why. Because the capacitance of the steel or aluminum creates only one harmonic, harmonic exclusiveness, and that's what kills the seeds. So the reason that you feel like mared shit, excuse me, when you walk into a steel and aluminum building is because your capacitance has no place to go. It's not fractal. It doesn't permit distribution. Whereas if you walk into a building made of like Michael's new house, biologic fabrics, biologic stone, biologic wood, bio phase conjugate material, fractal materials, that house makes life happen. So now we can actually explain why in a modern city with all the steel and electro electrosmog, everyone's dying <laughs> because the place isn't fractal, right? So it isn't that cities are a mistake fundamentally. What is a mistake fundamentally is a city that's not fractal. <laughs> Literally, the, the summary here is simple. If you want to take memory through death, if you want to cause a seed to germinate, if you want to have bliss, however you want to put it, the magnetic map of your heart and your DNA and your house and your property and the magnetic map of your city, they all need to look like a rose. Thank you very much. We, we do have... Thank you.
And its very nature is introducing the concept of the conjugation of phages, which is allowed by a pent, a non-rectilinear structure. A structure based on golden ratio creates pent, and that creates implosive compression, the opposite of what you get with a 4, 6, and an 8. The 5, 10 symmetries create golden ratio, and that's what creates perfect compression, and that's what creates charge distribution. And this is a map overlooking, this is actually the zoom from Google Earth of this structure. We're building the new Stonehenge of Australia at Tiagra Airport outside of Byron Bay. So, in Feng Shui, they knew that a sharp corner was evil. But now, as a physicist, I can explain to you why. Because the, r the right angle of that material creates a place where waves interfere destructively. And that's why, in Feng Shui, it's evil to sit next to a right sharp corner. It's because at that place, the electric fields create destructive wave interference. Now, if that corner were, in fact, based on 5, 6, or 8-sided symmetry and golden ratio, then it would not be evil because there would be constructive electric distribution at that point. And that is what creates life. Yeah? So the very nature of constructive versus destructive interference is what's actually defining the sacred and the ability to make life happen. In technical terms, the right angle here, 4, 6, and 8-sided symmetry, creates powers of 2 in the harmonic ratio, and that creates maximum destructive interference. And that biology doesn't like, which is to say opposite to phase conjugating. Whereas if that corner were based on golden ratio, as here, then that will create a positive effect on seed germination. So here, we put these seeds in a metal container and found that they didn't germinate. This is early experiments we did in Turin. Later, we have larger scale experiments where we see up to 300%. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you ready? <laughs> so this, this lecture is entitled The Science Behind Biologic Architecture. We originally assembled the curriculum for the Biologic Architecture Conference Series. Uh, we started in Mexico City. We had 300 international professionals there, thanks to Nina and Arturo. And here we want to go into a little bit more of the introduction, which is how do you make a building that causes an electric field that makes life happen? In other words, what is it to create a space which electrically causes a seed to germinate? So the point is that a building is a device that makes an electric field. And if that electric field is fractal, then everything grows better. Seeds germinate better, people get healthy, you have vitality, <coughs> and you lucid dream and you have bliss. And all that is based on a very simple science. And that science is that if the building itself looks like a rose, which is called fractal, then it creates perfect compression, which is what Michael was talking about when he talked about the sweet spot. So in a sense, the subtitle of this lecture is, what is the science of what makes a sweet spot? The sweet spot is the place where all waves converge, they implode, they compress, and they switch on what we call DNA radio. In science, that's called a phase conjugate dielectric field. Don't worry about those words, but that's actually what a fractal creates. It creates an electric field that creates perfect distribution. So, we start with some very soft, playful images as we introduce the more serious science. You wonder why, in the original crop circle, <coughs> the, the Stonehenge was located near a fractal. <coughs> and we see that nature is using fractals all over the place, just like in Michael's slideshow, where the inside looks like the outside, that self-similarity produces what in science defines fractality, which is perfect compression. Infinite non-destructive compression creates the possibility and growth effect. This is paramagnetic material. It's a, para, uh, it's a, a calcite uh, granite-based uh, stone that's in a trench in a Sri Yantra up to a half a mile across, or a quarter mile. But it's very large, like a football field, and there's an effect on growth in the center. And actually, the effect affects the climate and precipitation, etc. So we're beginning to see that the Earth grid and the dodeca shape of the galaxy and the zodiac, these shapes nature used for a reason because 
the extension of the dodecahedron creates golden ratio and that creates phase conjugation. This is just a picture of the first international conference on biologic architecture in Mexico City with Arturo Aninen, who will be presenting later, sequageometria.com. But notice the incredible interest in the student body and the professional architects and even the government. We had people from like 10 or 15 countries, all professionals, three day intensive conference on biologic architecture. And we stand in the shadow of that event in the sense that this was the sequel, yes? So this is from Michael Rice. And we don't need to continue here because he presented that beautiful. But you just see that the relationship between the geometry and the electric field created is fractal. This I would like to talk about. This is Ron Eglash, who is a famous professor who teaches about fractality in African architecture. Now what he noticed is the shape of the, the, shape of the village is the same as the shape of one house in the village. And the shape of the altar in the house of the shaman chief of the village. Here's the house of the shaman chief of the village in the fractal of the village. And the altar in the center of the shaman chief's house where you go to talk to your ancestors is the same shape. So the altar is the same shape as the house, is the same shape as the village. Do you see the concept of self-similarity? The inside that looks like the outside. That is fractality. That is perfect compression. The point is that as we'll later see, this is the place where you go to talk to your ancestors. Now, the reason you're able to talk to your ancestors here at the place called altar, if you know the origin of the word altar in church, it's the Sumerian word shem, which means shem on or shaman. It actually means high word firestone or fractal capacitor. So the definition of altar is actually a fractal capacitor. Even Zechariah Sitchin figured that out. So the point is that if you go to the place where we know it is more likely to be able to speak with your ancestors, you can measure the air there and prove why that space is sacred and why that place is the place where you can speak with your ancestors. The air there will be more fractal. Here is one of the technologies we use to measure sacred space. This is an extension of the GDV technology, gas discharge visualization, which is an extrapolation upon the, the uh, Curly and photography principle. And here we've measured the air. We're actually only measuring the ability of a spark to propagate. That's it. If there's a place for charge to go, and here we put the probe under a sacred tree, and we measured the ability of charge to be distributed. So under the sacred tree, we get this picture of the Curly and photograph of the charge in the sacred space, yeah? And then we measure the area and fractality of that distribution of charge. And then we go into the opposite to sacred space, a metal building all full of squares. And what did we get? This. This is why it feels like shit, <laughs> Mary, when you go into a metal building. Because the capacitance has no place to go. Charge distribution defines the sacred because that is how biological radio works. We call it DNA radio. So very simply put, the ability for charge to be distributed defines sacred space and defines the ability to make a building that can cause a seed of perfect charge distribution. And that is the physics of what, behind, what is behind what creates life. Perfected charge distribution is life. It's what's behind the word scion, which means to branch and the word divine, the concept of the sacred, is based on fractality for that reason, because it is from that place at the center of the fractal that you get perfected charge distribution. And that electrical perfect distribution or sharing of waves is what creates growth. And here's the point. In the original Orgone work, they saw they had a 30% difference in seed germination in what we now know is the correct term for an Oregon electric field, which is a phase conjugate dielectric or fractal field. And that's the title of our new technology series, fractalfield.com, and with Roger's help, <coughs> uh, breakthrough-technologies.com. So here we have the original magnetic map of the city of Prague, <laughs> which we'll be introducing Olda here very shortly. And when uh, Valerie and I were visiting Olda and doing this work in Prague, we noticed that living in the center of this map 
which turns out to be a rose, that we were able to lucid dream better, just like when Valor and I noticed we slept in that wooden egg that Michael designed, that we lucid dreamed better. Actually, I was able to... My, clairvoy my clairaudience is weak, but in Prague I was able to hear the voices of her ancestors. It's really true. We now know why the physics of this kind of electric field creates perfect compression and perfect distribution of that electric field. We know how to measure it. We know what sacred space is. This is our group in Australia assembling another fractal field, kind of a Stonehenge. The key elements that make that kind of field is the nature of the materials chosen. In this case, we have a basalt, and if we look at the cross-sectional view, it's a paramagnetic piezoelectric material, and the natural electrical molecular geometry is pent. It's a volcanic, but it's basalt, 